Hi, I'm Jackie Stapleton and welcome to Atoll TV. Today I'm here to help you with understanding the requirements of ISO 45001. If you like this video and want to see more great content, then click the subscribe button and the bell icon. It costs nothing to subscribe and you can unsubscribe at any time. In this video, I'm going to cover clause 6122, assessment of OH&S risks and other risks to the OH&S management system, which falls under the overarching clause 6, planning. I'm going to break this clause down and turn it into something you can all understand. You'll then be able to apply this to your own organization system and understand what the requirements will look like for you. No more guessing. Keep on watching as I can show you just how easy this is. Before I move on too much further now, I do want to point out that the title of this clause refers to OH&S risks and other risks to the OH&S management system. It's pretty clear that the OH&S risks come from the hazard identification process covered in clause 6121. Be sure to check that video out if you need a refresher. But what are the other risks to the OH&S management system? The other risks would have been identified earlier on in a standard, more than likely when working through clause 4.1, understanding the organization and its context, and clause 4.2, understanding the needs and expectations of workers and interested parties. Be sure to check those videos out too if you need to know more. Other sections in the standard where other risks are identified would be from clause 613, determination of legal requirements and other requirements, and even possibly clause 8.1, operational planning and control. The point to take away here is that this assessment requirement is not just as a result of hazards identified. It is a holistic assessment approach for all risks associated with the OH&S management system. Okay, let's get started in the nitty gritty of the clause requirements. I'm actually going to work backwards for this clause and start off with the final paragraph, as I think this will help us to understand points A and B a lot better. So the final paragraph of this clause states, the organization's methodology or methodologies and criteria for the assessment of OH&S risks shall be defined with respect to their scope nature and timing to ensure they are proactive rather than reactive and are used in a systematic way. Documented information shall be maintained and retained on the methodologies and criteria. First off, when I read the words of methodology and criteria, I think of a risk matrix. A risk matrix is a standard method I see out there when I'm auditing. Criteria can be aligned to the likelihood and consequence. The different levels in these parameters will differ based on each organization's hazards. Setting criteria for each will help to achieve some sort of consistency. It will never be perfect and can still be subjective. However, it's certainly a start. So to me, a methodology is to use a risk matrix, which includes the criteria set by the organization. ISO 45001 guidance also states that methodologies can include ongoing consultation of workers. Refer to our video on clause 5.4 for a refresher on this clause. And other methodologies include monitoring and communication of changed or new legal requirements, as well as other requirements. Refer to our video on clause 613 to learn more about this clause. So it's not only a tool such as a risk matrix, it's also activities that you conduct within your OH&S management system. And don't forget that this methodology and criteria is required to be maintained and retained. So we are looking for a procedure that tells us how we assess OH&S risks and what methodology and criteria is used. Then we are also required to retain evidence of its use. 
This means we should expect to see an output such as a risk or hazard register. You can call it what you like, really. It's more about demonstrating that you have identified hazards or other OHS risks. Use the documented methodology and criteria to assess the risks and documented what the risk rating is, which is essentially a demonstration of the assessment being conducted. Now that we understand what methodology, criteria and documented information is required, let's go back to the beginning and see what the requirements are. This clause kicks off with the organisation shall establish, implement and maintain a process or processes to assess OHS risks from the identified hazards while taking into account the effectiveness of existing controls and determine and assess the other risks related to the establishment, implementation, operation and maintenance of the OHS management system. Okay, so point A, we've already really covered. Assess the OHS risks from the hazards identified, and then it wants us to consider what controls are already in place when we do assess the risk. So when we use our risk matrix, for example, our assessment of the likelihood and consequence should take into consideration any controls that are already in place. So if we've identified the hazard of power tools and when the power tools are used, existing controls include a risk assessment on the tool itself, training and competence sign off and PPE, the risk assessment needs to consider how these existing controls will influence the likelihood and consequence of an incident or injury occurring. Make sense? And then point B is exactly what I explained way at the beginning of this video, that it's not just about assessing risks as a result of hazards identified. Assessment of risks is also required for all of the OHS management system, commencing at establishing the system, then implementing the operational aspects, and of course, ongoing maintenance. Assessment isn't something we do once, it is an ongoing activity to ensure that the OHS management system remains current and relevant to all activities. Now that I've explained all of these requirements, can you see more clearly how you could action and demonstrate these actions in your management system? Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Auditor Training Online is a recognized training provider and we know how it works in the real world. So we are confident that we can help you to make a change in your life and join the most sought after profession out there. Go to our website and enroll in our training to transform your work and industry experience into a recognized qualification and career. And also, don't forget to subscribe to Atoll TV and leave a comment or question as I truly do want to help you to join the best career out there with me.